I just will not be painting her nails and I will just explain to her it's not necessary for little kids. Show them what a real healthy marriage is like. I don't make my kids share. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about things that I don't let my kids do. Now I thought that this video would be fun to do because I do live a little bit of a different lifestyle than a lot of people. I know it's not so traditional and I um, see a few YouTubers, a few of my favorites do this video, um, Sarah Therese and Milena Ciciotti and I thought it would be really fun to do one as well because their videos like captivated me and there's so many things that I don't let my kids do and I thought why not share them and hopefully someone gets like a takeaway from this video. Now, if you guys do any of these things, I am not shaming you by any means. You guys do what you want to do. This is just what I have chosen for our family, but this doesn't mean you're a bad mom if you do these things or any of that. I just this is just what I chose and my decisions for my kids, but to each their own, no shade here, no one get their feelings hurt. These are just my personal beliefs. Let's go ahead and let's get into this video. If you're new here, my name is Noelle. I do all kinds of minimal mama content here on my channel. We vlog, we do informational sit down kind of videos like this where it's more like formal, formal or whatever, but so more formal videos like this where we just kind of sit down and we chit chat, you know, we got the lighting, the setup, all that. Anyways, I thought this video would be fun to do because it's a little bit different than what you see on a lot of people's channels. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I don't let my kids do, or at least my daughter do because my son's not going to do this anyway, is painting their nails. Now, the reason being for this is because I personally just don't think it looks good on little kids and I feel like... I don't know, I feel like it's an adult kind of like grown up thing, something they can look forward to in the future. Like, I don't know, I think nail polish, I think nail polish chips and it starts looking kind of like gross after a little bit. And I just feel like there's no reason and it's not necessary for children to have nail polish. And I am going to, Nola's not even two yet, but I already have this like set in my head. I already decided on it that she probably just will not be painting her nails and I will just explain to her why and that she can look forward to it. We can like play pretend, but I just think that it's not necessary for little kids. The next thing that I don't let my kids do is getting their ears pierced. I really went back and forth on this one and a lot of people traditionally get their kids ears pierced, especially girls, really young. And I was just like, I don't, like, okay, so when I was little, my mom waited until I was like eight or nine years old and I could decide for myself if I wanted it done or not. And I actually really appreciated that. I remember the whole experience, it was like, a whole thing I actually kind of flaked out a few times when we went to go get it done but finally I was brave enough and I did it and I remember the whole experience and it was like a whole little moment or whatever and I really love the fact that she did that and I just think that it's something your ch kids should be able to choose like maybe they don't want them pierced maybe they do I had some friends actually in high school that didn't want their ears pierced and never would wear earrings just for that reason. So I think it's so important to let our kids make these decisions and choose for themselves as they get older because I feel like just because we're the parents doesn't mean we need to make all these kind of decisions for them because they can when they're a little bit older. And yeah, so no ear piercings for Nola until she decides if she wants it then i'm all here for it i will take her we'll have a whole little girls moment or whatever but i just feel like until then we're gonna just hold off and again no shade that does not mean you're a bad mom by any means when i say any of these things i just have chosen this for our family i want to make that so so clear because i don't want you guys to feel like you're bad if you do any of this or that we can't be friends or any of that like this is just what i chose and you know, my friends and mama friends have different beliefs and what they do, and that doesn't mean I don't like you if you do these things, okay? So, to make that very clear. Another thing that I don't let my kids do is I don't cut their hair because they are so little. I am like 
kind of hell-bent on that I don't want to cut Noah's hair it's getting really long I just feel like we've we've trimmed it obviously because dead ends and like you want it to still grow but I just feel like again that's another decision that he can make when he's older I feel like who am I to cut his hair like yes I'm his parent but I feel like you know what if he wants longer hair what if he just wants banging hair when he's like older and I suppose he can always like grow it out again if we were to cut it but I just feel like again that's something else that he can um, make that decision on when he's a little bit older. If he wants to cut it, I'm here for it. If he doesn't, I'm here for it too. So I just take care of it. I just take care of it the best that I can so he can make that decision when he's older. I don't vlog with my kids more than once a week or every two weeks just for their own privacy. Um, I just do that because I just feel like it's too much with the camera. I don't think that everybody needs to see every moment, you know? like. As they're growing up, they deserve privacy just like any other kid. So I don't vlog more than once a week or once every two weeks. And I feel like I don't have that much to share anyway, vlogging like every day. That's just not for us. Not for us. I want them to have their own privacy and be able to live their little lives without like so many people watching, you know? But I love to vlog for you guys, I do. But I also like to be really respectful to my kids and their privacy in their own home. I feel like some moments just need to be private. Another thing is we don't let our kids think that we have this perfect marriage, that we like never fight or anything like that. We definitely do fight sometimes in front of them. It never gets like crazy or like physical or anything like that. But I like to, you know, show them what a real healthy marriage is like, how you solve problems, how we, you know, make up and all that stuff after we have like a disagreement or an argument. I think that's so important because um, growing up, I did have some friends that like their parents never fought and then out of nowhere they got a divorce and the kids are like, what? So I just think that it's so important to show your kids and kind of like model what a healthy marriage relationship is like. Like, yes, you can have disagreements, but, you know, also work through those and solve it and things are good again. So I think that's really important as well. We don't let our kids think that like sugary things are treats because... I want them to have a good relationship with food and we always put like little desserts or sweet things with their food. That's something we've always done just because I want to make sure that they don't think sweets are treats because then they are going to be like super excited when they see something sweet and I think that it's just food and it should just be a part of their normal you know but we really regulate their sugar so it's not like we let them have a lot and a lot of the things that are sugary are actually really healthy um or organic we really try very hard to monitor their sugar intake but we don't like to give dessert like afterwards we kind of just give it to them with their food that way it's just a part of their food and I notice that they eat their food a lot more when doing this this way they might eat the sugar stuff first but then they go ahead and eat the rest of their food and they're not like waiting for that treat afterwards because it's already there on their plate. So that works really well for us and that's what we do. Another thing since we're talking about sugar intake is I don't let my kids have just like pure juice. Like I always mix it with water, a lot more water than juice if they even get juice. I just like to monitor their sugar intake and they don't get a lot of candy and usually it's... um substituted by something healthy like a fruit rope or organic fruit snacks or freeze-dried fruit something like that um every now and then they'll have like a candy but i like to really monitor the sugar intake because mama doesn't need any kids extra bouncing off the walls and it's just like better for their health overall i don't let my kids use any tablets or our phones like that's just a no-no in this house because i just feel like it's unnecessary those things are ours um as adults and i don't think that kids really need electronics like that like especially access to the internet the internet is a scary place it's a scary place and i just feel like kids don't need to be on it I am going to try so hard to keep them off of it for as long as possible. And you might say, well, Noelle, you put your kids on YouTube. I do. But them, like, personally are not going to be on social media or the internet for a very long time. And I'm going to try my best 
to keep it that way and I don't let them just watch whatever they want if they are using like the iPad I make sure I go to it and it's very appropriate it's a kid situation something they can learn like Sesame Street Doc McStuffins um, Blues Clues things like that that I know are gonna teach them something and not you know so I just know what they're watching monitor what your kids are watching especially if they're watching YouTube just just eyes on that always but um yeah so if they are if they do ever have a tablet it's just for purely watching something and really that's it but usually when they are watching something it's usually on the big screen on the tv it's really rare if they have an ipad so yeah since we're talking about screen time since i kind of like walked over to screen time screen time is something else we really limit now i am not anti-screen time i think screen time is our friend as parents i think it can be really educational and i think that it could be really good for them actually but i like to monitor tv time and i like to try to have it later on in the day about like one or two o'clock like once the morning is kind of done and we've done some like sensory activities or some kind of outside play or some kind of learning something in the morning um but yes so i monitor their screen time i try not to let them watch too much tv but yes they they do watch tv but just i'm trying to you know monitor how much they watch and it's so it's not excessive I don't like to tell my kids no but I do sometimes I mean it's really hard to break this habit but I'm trying to I try to tell them why not to do something instead of just saying no like don't do that it just gives them more of an explanation it's like a learning teaching moment as well to try to tell them and explain the why behind you don't want them to do something this takes practice and i'm still really trying to adapt this habit but so far it's been pretty good but you know i might say no every now and then but i'm really trying to knock that out and just really hone in on explaining why not to do something like noah don't hit your sister or no don't hit your sister instead of doing that I try to just explain to him like Noah we don't hit each other because you know blank 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 just you know just explaining why one it's a distraction so they kind of are like whoa whoa like what so they don't throw a tantrum and two they're understanding a little bit more why not to do something instead of just saying like now don't do it it just is more of a teaching moment and you know so i try to do that that is something i'm still working on but so far you know it's going good it's going good it's not perfect but it's in the works <laughs> i don't make a big deal when my kids get hurt now sometimes this could be a hard thing this is something i had to learn like the first thing you want to do when your kid gets hurt is like oh <gasps> like are you okay like get all dramatic about it but honestly if you don't and you kind of just internalize it a little bit and just like check to make sure they're okay you tell them that they're okay they won't react and have this huge tantrum or you know screaming and crying if you don't react that way so if your reaction isn't so dramatic then theirs probably won't be either and it just makes that whole situation easier but it can be hard because whenever I see them fall, I just like, my heart just like skips five beats and I'm just like, oh, please let them be okay. And then, you know, but I try not to let them see me kind of freak out. It just seems to help with that process better. They usually just get right back up and they're really resilient and I'm like, oh, okay, they're fine. So I've just really learned with Noah, I had to learn that kind of quickly, but I'm really glad that I did because it seems to make the falling process and the tumble process a lot easier for both of us. I don't worry about messes that my kids make. Now this can be hard, especially for me. I have like OCD for real. Um, but for some reason when it comes to my kids like making a mess with their sensory play or just making a mess in here in general or even in the room, I don't get mad. I feel like when they're making a mess, it's a teaching learning moment and i feel like i can't really be mad at that the cleanup isn't that bad usually and if it is like whatever it's just part of being a mom but i don't feel like it's any reason to get mad or upset about it. i just like to keep in mind that if they're making a mess then you know what they're learning and they're growing and it's a good it's a good thing messes are a good thing um also 
letting kids participate in everyday things like helping you do laundry doing dishes of course with your supervision but just getting them a part of things might be a little bit more messy than when you just do it by yourself but by letting them be involved it's a teaching moment and they appreciate it so it's good for their development and overall it just makes them feel really accomplished especially when you give them praise after they did something even if they made a mess it's oh it's okay messes are okay and the last and final thing that I have is I don't make my kids share. Now the reason being for this is like when you really think about it, if a kid has a toy and they got it first, like why would you, why would you make them give it to the other kid just because they wanted it? You know what I'm saying? Yes, sharing is caring, but I feel like in that certain situation, let the kid play with it first that had it first and then when that kid is done then the next kid can play with that item or that piece whatever because i just feel like that's just the way it should be like why take it from one kid that's enjoying it just for the other one to enjoy it that wanted it like second so that's how we handle that um and to be honest noah likes to share on his own when he feels inclined to he loves to give his sister a little food and things like that so honestly that has worked really well for us and it just kind of keeps the peace if that kid wants the same toy that the other kid has i literally just give them something else i'll give nola something else or noah something else if he wants something this could be hard sometimes though because Noah just will take things from Nola but I literally will take it back from him give it to her and give him something else um, because Nola had it first or if Noah had it first same thing so that's the way we handle sharing in this house so we don't make them share unless they want to. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got like a takeaway or something from this video. I thought that this video would be interesting and a little bit different to just kind of hear how we do things and some like parenting things that are not super traditional. I think that it's really interesting to see what other people do in their house and like what their beliefs are with their children and like what they install in their home but yes so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys are new here i would hope you consider to subscribe and like all that good stuff and i will see you guys in the next one bye